Hey everyone, welcome back to Buick Outdoors. If you're new here, my name is Sheldon Marion, and today I wanted to set up kind of like a live feed type of video. Uh, unfortunately for me out here, uh, we don't have any Wi-Fi or any internet whatsoever, uh, other than what's on our phones. So unfortunately, uh, I just can't do a live stream kind of a thing. So I'm gonna do kind of the next best thing and just kind of do it this way. Uh, today I'm just uh, spending the day in the shop. I got a uh, brand new still the other day and then also got this old Husqvarna. Uh, I haven't ran this thing in probably six or seven years and it's been just kind of tucked away outside. It's got a bunch of leaves and snow on it to dig it out of the ice and all that stuff. But today I'm going to open her up. Now, I'm going to see if I can clean it up and get it to fire up and run. And if I can, I think what I'll do is I'll bring the new still with me for falling and bucking. And then I might pack this one around just for limbing, uh, like the big spruce and stuff like that. Uh, especially some of the spruce out here. Uh, there can be like hundreds of limbs and packing around like a big 261 still. Uh, it's, it's doable and I've done it for years. Well, with this, it just makes life a little easier, so why not do it? Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, let's open this thing up. I believe the size is uh, 120, but I, I don't really, uh, don't really quite remember. But uh, yeah, we'll get into it here. I got the old wood stove going and the barrel stove. Uh, it kind of got away on me a little bit earlier, so it got a little smoky, but we got that under control. And I haven't opened this up in uh, quite a few years. Oh, yeah, that thing's dirty. Oh, I don't even have bar nuts on the thing. <laughs> There's probably some husky guys out there just screaming at me right now. Well, it's a Husqvarna 235. I don't know why I don't have bolts on there, but part of this too is I'll just make up like kind of a parts list too. Then the next time I'm in town, we'll get all the parts and stuff that we need for this. Uh, this box, let's get that out of the way. Oh man. So it's definitely seen some better days. <laughs> oh man, I'm just gonna take this bar off. Oh. Yeah, you can see on the inside here, it's, it's just filthy dirty. Same thing. The whole thing is just dirty. I mean, like, I even got mold growing on the one handle, but this is why we're going to dig her out today, clean her up, see if it'll run. Hopefully there's no gas in it. Oh. Some residual gas in there. Oh man. Alright, I'm gonna run to my truck, grab a couple tools. So I'll be honest with you, I run a chainsaw quite a bit. But I'm actually not much of a chainsaw guy. Like I, I really don't know how to take anything apart or anything like that. I'm just a guy that runs a chainsaw and cuts firewood. But uh, 
basically the only tools that I really pack with me, just this small little flathead screwdriver. That little tool there, kind of like the little hex there. I don't know if that's for Husky or if it's just for still. And then of course your little chainsaw wrench, right? But uh, yeah, I'm gonna use that. Open up the bar oil here. Oh man, I might actually have to clean that out before I wreck it. Oh, this thing is just filthy. Yeah, that uh, little hex torque doesn't quite fit there. But oh, uh, we'll get around to that. For right now, I think what we'll do is we'll just kind of clean this, clean this up, clean up on the inside here, and uh, yeah, go from there. I'm not gonna do anything real fancy. I'm pretty well, just gonna scrape it out. And even when I ran this. I actually didn't really run it all that much. And I, I cut firewood for the house. Maybe for a year or two maybe. And then after that I, I got the old uh, MS-260 still from dad. I think he bought a brand new one. And he gave me his old one and that one. Uh... That used to be kind of like the trap line saw. We ran that for years and years on the old trap line. I don't even know how many thousands of miles that thing has in the box of a sleigh going around the 129 cabin, the Cecil cabin. It put on some miles. I wouldn't want to know how many cords of wood that thing's cut either between cutting firewood for the for the cabins clearing trails cutting firewood for the house cutting firewood for the shop cutting firewood for other people it uh it's, it's definitely ran its time and even now I, I bought a brand new one uh not because the old one's worn out like it still runs perfectly fine I definitely keep it cleaner than this but uh, I just want an upgrade I think it was about time to get something new other than this husky I don't think I've ever owned a brand new saw and this husky it did the job but uh, when you mainly heat your house with wood uh, yeah you, I needed something with a little more power Instead of cutting a cord of wood and taking all day long to do it, you know, I can cut a cord of wood about half a day or whatever with the with the 260 still. And then the one I upgraded to is a MS261CM, so it's the uh, I guess professional version. You know what they want to call it, like the forestry ones. So it's a little bit lighter, has a little bit more power. Uh, the fuel economy is better, has an air circulation for the carb, so when I'm running it in the winter, you pull a little plastic tab out and you just flip it around, put it back in, and then uh, it kind of circulates some of the hot air coming off your engine back into your carb and circulates it, keeps it nice and warm. Holy cow. But uh, maybe what I'll do with that too is maybe I'll make another video and I'll go through the the new saw there. I mean, I fired it up a couple of times, hit the throttle once or twice, you know, but I actually haven't cut with it yet. Uh, so I'm excited to do that. I might do that here later today as long as the wind doesn't pick up overly too much. Oh, the amount of junk and stuff that's coming out of here. 
You know, when I had this too, I wasn't exactly uh, kind of old and smart yet. I'm still young and dumb still, but I was younger and dumber. Like I had this when I was like 18 or 19. So I didn't know what I was doing. I just went out, cut firewood when it was done. I just threw it in the truck, threw it in the box. Apparently threw it beside the shop, let it sit there for a few years and collect bugs and cobwebs and who knows what. I'm curious to see if that thing will actually, if it'll actually fire or not. I kind of want to douse it all down with some brake clean or something and then uh, polish it up a little bit. But uh, we'll see here what happens. Oh man, even the chain tensioner is right full of junk and garbage. I'm kind of kind of ashamed of how bad I let this thing get. But oh well, we're cleaning her up now. <laughs> I'll show you how much crap came out of this so we got all this out of that and right there you know and it's actually not that bad considering how long it's been sitting there's some black junk in there and the rewind and all that but uh, I think with a little bit of brake clean maybe That might uh, come out because it's just kind of just kind of oily junk, eh? So it's just kind of like sawdust and oil. So it's, I mean, it, it is bad. There's no, there's no good side to this at all. But uh, let's see if we can scrape this in here. stuff outside here and uh, give her a spray down I'll grab this I'll grab the camera and go outside watch the light I had to make some room in the shops. I took the old moose horns, brought them outside. You definitely don't want to spray this in there. It's a pretty tight area. There, we got that sprayed down. I'm gonna let that soak. We can bring this back inside now, and then, uh, yeah, I'll keep cleaning it up and I'll grab some paper towel and stuff and get it all wiped down. There we go. 
So if you guys kind of like this kind of video, uh, let me know uh, in the future too, once I do get internet out here. Uh, I will do the odd live stream here and there. It's not going to be a every day, all day kind of a thing, but once in a while it would be kind of nice to have a little live stream going. That way I can talk with everybody. And all that good stuff. Call you out by your name and say hi to everyone, you know. Uh, we're slowly getting to have a pretty good following. Uh, you know, we have a couple of pretty, pretty loyal guys. Uh, you know, there's guys like, you know, my brother and Shelby and all that. But then, uh, his old uh, Smidge McGee, he comes around every, every so often. Peter, you watch the videos every Friday. That's pretty cool seeing that, you know, it's... Uh, Little things like that, it kind of makes it feel like we have a bit of a community growing. And, uh, you know, it, it's pretty neat having that. Uh, you can pretty well rely on certain guys that are going to be watching it every week. And uh, it's pretty cool. You know, we definitely, definitely appreciate uh, the loyalty and all that. You know, it's kind of like having to internet friend or something whatever you want to call it you know it's uh it's nice it's pretty nifty and then uh i didn't think i was gonna turn youtube into what it is today uh to be honest with you i started it because i just kind of wanted to try filming a hunt or two and in the beginning i kind of i wanted to treat it almost like a tv show and, uh, yeah, it didn't take me long to figure out that you don't want to do that. It's pretty boring and, I don't know, it's not fun. Plus, the whole TV show aspect of things, like, I don't want that. I'd much rather do this, put out a video every Friday kind of thing. Maybe one day if I go kind of full time on this. There'll be two videos a week and a live stream on Sunday, kind of a thing, you know what I mean? Uh, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there, you know? We have a long ways to go yet before we're able to do that, but uh, that's where you guys, you know, just subscribing to the channel, liking it, commenting on stuff. Uh, telling your friends, buying merchandise, using our promo codes with affiliate deals that we have, you know, that it all helps us out in the long run. I'm not, I'm not sitting here asking you to do it, but if you do do it, that's great. Uh, I'm not going to beg and plead for you to do something that you don't want to do kind of thing. Uh, like even our, we have our little clothing uh, brand with uh with spread shirt and that i mean really that's not uh the way that thing works is i don't make a bunch of money off of that i pretty well i started up with spread shop you basically pick the clothing and accessories that you want i upload uh, a picture that you put onto it and then you set your price so you have like your base price that it costs for each one, they keep an inventory and all that stuff. Uh, and then when you order it, some things I make 50 cents, some things I make $3, and that's about it. Uh, when you first set it up, everything is set up so it uh, you make like $5 off of every purchase. But then the prices were just outrageous. For like a sweater, it was like, 50 some odd bucks and for a cup it was like 27 or 28 dollars and i'm not into that i want you guys to buy it because it's something that you want to buy you know what i mean not something that you feel obligated to buy and then it, it's going to make you broke to pay for it because i tell you if somebody was selling a cup for 40 dollars i wouldn't buy it if it was 20 ah you know, it's one of those little kind of iffy things. If I like the guy, you know, I'll, I'll spend 20 bucks. But unfortunately, the overhead cost, you know, it's 
so high that uh, you have to set it at 20. Because other than that, you know, I'd be paying for every cup that you order kind of a thing. And uh, yeah, that's not a good way to run a business. Alrighty. Let's see if I can't get this thing. I don't know why this is so stuck in there. Oh man. There we go. Well, I think with everything kind of cleaned up, what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my chainsaw gas and oil and put a little squirt in here and see if it'll fire up. If you guys run chainsaws, I highly recommend buying one of these. This thing is cool. You got your mixed gas on this side, you have your bar oil on that side, and it is nice. I still run kind of a two jerry can system. I got the one where it's 10 liters, and that way, you got one of these, you dump this into 10 liters, mix it up, and it's 50 to 1 ratio. And then from there, I'll transfer it to this because this only holds, I think, six liters. Yeah, six liters. And then my bar oil, instead of carrying a big 10 liter jerry can and the big jug of chain oil, I just dump the chain oil into here and you're off to the races. It's, it's actually pretty nice. I should have bought this years ago. And then you have this little spout. It's pretty nifty, if you can get it out. There we go. Oh, I went too far. There. I have a feeling that might leak around there, but whatever. If it does, it's no big deal. doesn't need much plus I don't have a bar I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave the bar off cuz uh but those bar nuts put a bar on there and chain you're not gonna have a good day there you go put that on there finger tight junk in there which I'm actually kind of surprised back here there we go And again with this here, I'm not going to put much in there. We're all just enough to wet its lips. About that much. I don't know how much that is. A couple ounces really. I may able to get rid of the touch more. There we go. It's a tiny, tiny little uh, fuel tank on that thing anyways
There we go. We're getting fuel through the primer there. Go full choke. Let's see, pull three times, half. <laughs> well, it started, which I'm actually kind of surprised. You can definitely smell the whole gas. I'm gonna open up my door here. You know, I never understood the whole concept between still versus husky. It's kind of like the forward versus chef kind of thing. I think they all have their kind of whatever differences and all that but really I just fired this thing up after I I really don't know when the last time I fired it up. I'm gonna see if I can get her to go again. It's almost like the fuel pickup there ain't working too good. Really gotta prime it. Full choke. Put on half choke. You can hear that it's wanting to run. Try again, full choke after primed it a few more times. Half choke.
I'm surprised it still fires up. I'm thinking there's just a little bit of old fuel in there, or maybe the spark plug's a little iffy that needs to be changed out kind of a deal, but uh, it's wanting to go. The oiler is working for sure. I got oil all over my, my bench here now. Yeah. That, uh, it runs. I'll have to mess around with that a little bit more here. And then, uh, yeah, maybe I'll go to town, buy a new bar and chain for it. Actually, the bar, that looks fine. It's not bent or crooked or anything. I definitely have to get some, uh, some new nuts for it. I don't know where the heck those went. Open up the box and this just falls out. I don't know. I might have some random nuts around here that'll fit. Let me check my uh, toolbox here. I just have to move you guys out of the way. Here, I'll even point you over in this direction. And, uh, again, you guys, if you like this kind of a video, let me know and I'll, I'll do another one uh, I don't know, at some point in time. Uh, it was too small. The wood screws. I need screws. I need nuts. What's in here? Nope. Oh, you're hot. I don't think I'm going to have much luck with those. You start looking through coffee cans and stuff, you find what you're looking for. Yeah. Nah, those won't work. I think we're out of luck with that. Oh well. Well, that's kind of nifty that we got that thing to run. I, I really didn't think it was going to go. I thought this video was just going to be me sitting here talking BS and the, the end of the video go, oh, well, you know, we tried, but, uh, <laughs> I'm actually, uh, I'm very surprised that it went. Oh, but yeah, guys, you know, so far this YouTube thing, it's been, uh, it's been pretty sweet. I, uh. I really didn't expect us to be where we are here today. Uh, you know, it seems like every day we grow a little more and more. And uh, yeah, the, the community slowly growing. Uh, kind of like the company YouTube itself seems to be extremely stable. I mean, Google owns it. Google is doing great. Uh, hopefully this whole pandemic thing is over here soon and people are actually able to get out and enjoy life a little bit more uh you know i'm hoping some of my videos have helped uh some people get out there um you know for the most part yeah yeah you know, to, to go outside in the bush and go fishing or hunting or fossil hunting and just exploring check out waterfalls or whatever you know there's no covid rules out there you're already going to be distancing from everybody you don't have to wear a mask when you're outside you know it's uh it's one of those things if you're getting cooped up and kind of getting stressed out over everything 
head out to the woods, have some fun, enjoy yourself, enjoy nature, bring a camera with you, take some pictures. Uh, you know, I wouldn't really say buy a fancy camera like the one I got and start doing photography or anything like that, but you know, take your phone out, take some pictures, maybe do some editing or whatever and make things look nice. Get them printed out at whatever print shop you got. You know, put them up on your wall. It, it's a it's a nice little thing to get into. Maybe this summer and spring, you know, I'll make up a few videos of me going out and uh, showing you some of my photography stuff. Uh, actually, one big thing. Uh, I want to say I think it was two years ago. Uh, I was on my way to Prince Rupert, and uh, I ran on to a nice little grizzly bear. So I stopped and got the camera out, got nice and close to the old bear there, and uh, I took a couple of real nice pictures of him. And uh, SCI is going to be uh, putting my picture on a eight by 10 foot banner. So I had all their conventions and stuff like that, you know, SCI, uh, first for hunters, uh, they're gonna be, uh, you can see my picture on the big banner which is pretty cool uh you know so so not only do i have you know like youtube going good i guess photography is going good too if you can i'm not really pursuing it though i just like to take pictures of cool stuff in the house i got a bunch of things that i've printed out on canvas well it's not a bunch but i got a couple now anyways and they all look real nice and now i got uh sei gonna put my picture on their banner uh, I believe they're gonna be putting the Buick Outdoors logo on that as well so that might uh, ramp some things up for us which would be pretty neat uh, another thing uh, bees matter I think what they're called they showcased a couple of my pictures I have one of those uh, it's like a micro micro or macro lens this is how much I know about photography I don't even know what kind of a lens I have I want to say it's macro lens. So you're able to get extremely close to stuff, but it makes a, just a nice, big, beautiful picture. And I got a couple of really nice pictures of bees and you can see all the pollen on it and stuff like that. And they uh, kind of showcased a couple of my pictures. Uh, that was mainly just on like their Facebook page, but it, it's still pretty cool. Uh, get your get your name out there and all that. But uh, yeah. Yeah, things are going very, very well. Uh, oh, we got the chainsaw running. I got to do a few things around here yet today. I got another one of these lights. Not quite this one. This is just a single strip. I'm going to hang that up here somewhere. I'm not too sure exactly where yet. This light does good for this one little spot here, but maybe over on the other side or in the back because in behind me there's another probably about six feet of shop back there whoever built it there they kind of did like this dividing wall and then in the back there's a bunch of shelving and stuff and this spring i gotta go through all that get rid of a bunch of junk and garbage and clean things up and i got a couple sets of moose horns you gotta hang up elk horns uh with my lifestyle, you know, I got a pile of stuff. So I gotta go through everything and clean that stuff all up. You know, there's, I got like my ice fishing gear. I got some hunting gear. Gear for when I'm in the wall tent. Got bows and arrows and chainsaws. Transmission fluid. I got all this stuff for a little bit of woodworking and wood carving and stuff. And dremels and weed whacker. Oh man, I got so much... It's not even, I want to call it junk, but not junk. It's stuff that I use, but there's a lot of it. <laughs> Actually, you know, maybe before we end this here, we'll run out to the truck here and I'll, I'll grab the new saw. And I'll show that off a little bit and you guys can check that out. Again, this... Uh, this style of video 
this style of video is kind of a new thing for me. I think it's kind of weird and strange slightly because not like a, a live stream, but uh, it is what it is. We're making it work, I guess. We just got back from Overly Lake yesterday. Uh, didn't catch nothing for once. The fishing wasn't overly too hot. And then the wind picked up like crazy. And I'll be honest with you, we, uh, I'm overly, I was following Blaine out, which I think was my first mistake, because he didn't know where he was going, how he got to the lake, even though he was there the day before. And uh, it took him a few minutes to kind of get situated to find out exactly where he was. And they pulled onto the lake and he goes, yeah, right where those guys are fishing is where we were fishing at. All right, well, where do you want to go? I know on the other side of the lake, uh, I know of a, a few spots where some people go. So we, we quickly ran across to the other side when we drilled the hole, we were only about 14 to 16 inches of ice, and that was up close to shore, so in the middle of the lake when we crossed with our pickups. Uh, I don't want to know how thin that ice was. That was definitely a very, very, very stupid part uh, on us. Definitely should not have done that. So if you head out there, don't, uh, don't drive across the lake. It's... I don't know how we didn't fall through to be honest with you but anyways guys this here's the new saw nice little still 261 hopefully you've seen that but yeah ms 261 cm it's a pretty decent saw uh comes with a 20 inch bar uh decompression switch up top i guess everything is kind of made to be kind of smaller and lighter like i think this is all magnesium the pistons magnesium so it's a bit lighter and there's more power uh this is one of the professional forestry ones uh, so this one being a 261 i think it's uh jeepers 50 or 58 cc i can't remember i don't really know the specs <laughs> if you guys want to check out the specs you can go online but uh it's basically the same power as one of the bigger residential ones but uh yeah we'll see if she'll fire up here now that's nice and cold Put just enough to fire it up there at the dealership. Well, I'm 
pretty happy with that though. <laughs> I'm thinking, uh, well, probably today I'll take her out once I clear out the truck with all the ice fishing gear. We'll take this thing out. We'll cut a firewood. Uh, I don't know, maybe we'll just cut one load today. Bring it back, split it all up, and all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, guys. <laughs> well, thanks for spending some time with me in the shop. Uh, yeah, if you guys want to see more videos like this, uh, let me know in the comments or whatever there. Uh, you know, in the future, once I do get internet out here, I'm on the waiting list for uh, Starlink. I think I've been on that for oh two years now. So it's it's slowly coming, but I think they have it in Tumble Ridge now, so should be within the next hopefully six months to a year. If not, well we we'll just gotta patiently wait. But anyways guys, hope you liked this video. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll get you on the next one.